All right, so as you guys can see, we have a large chiller here. There's a trio of compressors. We are gonna pull a vacuum on the system. We removed the gas, did some repair work, and now we have to pull a vacuum. Now, in order to pull an efficient vacuum on a system, it's best to go from system straight to pump and not through gauges because gauges provide leak points, quarter inch hoses provide restrictions, and so does Schrader core. So we're gonna go through the steps on how to pull a quick, effective vacuum and a more efficient vacuum on a system this size. A hundred percent advisable to use larger hoses than quarter inch hoses because the quarter inch hoses do provide a restriction and it will take your evacuation much longer. Now we have the true blue hoses here from AccuTools and here are all the stainless steel clamps. We have some core removal tools. So we're gonna set this up in a T formation so we can grab the suction and discharge side of the system and tee it back to the vacuum directly to the pump. So I'm gonna put this together and you guys can see how it all goes into one piece. Okay, so I have some of this assembly put together. We have a stainless steel tee and some clamps. These just go on hand tight, nothing past that, okay? Uh, we don't wanna over tighten these. Now, as you start to pull a vacuum, these things actually seal up much better as you pull a vacuum. So to make sure we're doing this correctly, each fitting, we need to make sure that we have a seal there like that, and then it just goes on and then we apply the clamp, okay? The other thing I wanna mention is there's a few different sizes that comes with the kit. Now, the Navac 12 CFM pump we're gonna use actually has three different size connection ports. This is a half inch. This is the biggest one, so we're gonna use the biggest one to get as much flow as possible. So we're gonna go attach this to the T here on the bottom, and this assembly will attach to the system. This T will attach to the pump. In order to attach these hoses to the system, we need to apply these quarter inch ports right here. These quarter inch service ports. So these just go on like so, and then again, we use some clamps. Now these clamps that it comes with, these ones are a little bit different. We need to take this bolt out, apply the clamp and then put it back together. I'll show you how to do that now. And again, we just go hand tight with these clamps as well. Now this takes a few minutes to set up, but the time it will save you on your evacuation is tremendous. In order to pull a proper vacuum, we need to utilize a micron gauge. This is the Subco VG64 OTL, okay? Now, we use this so we know what pressure the system is and so we know when the evacuation is finished. For years, industry standard has been around 500 microns, so we want to get below that 100% before we add refrigerant back to the system. Now, as you see here, I have a coupling which is on a bit of an angle here. Now, we want to add this in because we want to keep the micron gauge upright within the system. I'll show you guys how to do that. We want to keep it upright because we don't want any system contaminants getting inside the micron gauge because system contaminants inside the gauge can cause it to read faulty and then we have to go and clean it up. But if we keep it upright, we're going to prevent that from happening. So a lot of people get confused when we talk about removing the cores out of a system to get them out of the way because cores do cause a restriction and they can cause your vacuum time to be much longer than it needs to be. So in order to do that, we use a core removal tool just like this. Now, when we take it apart, we have this piece, we're gonna remove the core with this piece, and then we're gonna attach the valve assembly, and I'll show you how that gets used in conjunction with the hoses. Okay, so I've loosened this core off. So there it is, we're gonna take the core right out of there, and we're gonna fasten on the valve assembly to that fitting right now, there. Now what I like to do is add a little bit of nylog to the fitting, and to the assembly, that way I know that it's sealed nice and tight and we're not gonna have any leak points where I connect the core removal tool to the fitting right here. So now we have gone straight from the suction side and the discharge side of the system straight to the pump with large diameter hoses. The cores have been removed for any restrictions, okay? And we've applied nylog to the fittings in order to keep that good seal as we pull a vacuum. Now we want to open up these ball valves. Now we had a little bit of snow last night and some of it's melting. 
It's melting onto the pump, unfortunately. Maybe we can try to cover that up with something, but everything's all attached. Everything's ready to rock. The only thing we got to do is put our micron gauge on so we can measure the pressure of the evacuation and the performance over time. All right, so we have utilized solenoid magnets on the liquid line and hot gas bypass solenoid to open the system wide. I suggest you guys do this or you can have problems with your evacuation getting all the contaminants out. We have our micron gauge mounted with the coupling so the micron gauge is upright. And I know it looks down on an angle here, but it's upright from the system. It's not down here. It's not gonna collect system contaminants and fill up. We have it upright. Okay, the other thing, if you'll notice, this is on the liquid line. So our vacuum hoses are set up on the discharge and the suction. We have put this right in the middle of the system. So we're gonna get a good indication of the system pressure as we're pulling a vacuum. Right, guys, so I've dried the pump up. I have the box over top of it, just water's dripping off, which is keeping it dry for now until the snow melts. What you guys wanna do is open the gas ballast up. What that does is it preserves the oil in the pump until we hit the 1500 to 2000 micron level. Once we hit that level, we close the gas ballast up. We allow the oil to start grabbing the contaminants for the final pull down. All right, so now we're below 2,500 microns. It's been about two hours. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna wait till we get below 2,000, close that blank off, allow the system oil to grab those contaminants. Once we get to 500 or below, what we gotta do is perform a rise or a decay test. What that is, is we close off the blank offs. The two ball valves on the Schrader core removal tools, we close them off and watch for a rise on the micron gauge, okay? If we rise and flatten off around 800 to 1,000, it's not a big deal. But if we keep rising up past that, we may have further contaminants in the system we need to remove. Okay, so we have hit around 1860. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close off this gas ballast now for the remainder of the evacuation. All right guys, so after about 20 hours of evacuation, we're at 945 microns. Now we did pull a vacuum overnight and the temperatures went below zero degrees Celsius. Now when you pull a vacuum in cold temperatures, your vacuum pump can struggle. Also you can have water vapor freeze into small water droplets. Now this will cause sublimation to happen. The water droplets that are frozen they will move from a solid to a gas and still move through the system, but it could take longer because of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this vacuum. All right, we're gonna sweep it with nitrogen. We're gonna change the vacuum pump oil and we'll see where we're at in a bit. And we might go for a full on triple sweep of the system. So the other thing I'm gonna show you here guys is that the evaporator bundle and the receiver, they have heaters here. All right, and we put these heaters in for when the ambient is really, really cold. We had an issue about four years ago, we had a polar vortex and we could not build pressure in this chiller. So we put heaters in and we set them up so that they would come on in low ambient conditions to raise the pressure of the system. Now, what I did was, is I set these up and I turned them on, I turned the heaters on. You can feel the heat here or you can check it with an amp, an amp probe. Now, since I've done that, we have dropped 15 microns in about 20 minutes so we're adding heat back into the system which seems to be dropping that micron level a little bit quicker also the ambience warming up but we're gonna still perform the triple sweep anyway One thing I will show you guys right now is that I've closed off the ball valve on both of these and we are gonna look for a decay here or a rise now if that rise were to spike really really quick that would show us there's a leak in the system but if it moves slow upwards and flattens out, it shows us we still have a potential moisture in the system or contamination to pull out. Now, since I've done that, we've gone up 10 microns in a few minutes. So that tells me we don't have a leak because we've sort of flattened out here, but we have more contamination to pull out of the system. So what I did here is I put nitrogen through the system via the discharge line right here, okay? There's my tank there. And just so I know it's flowing through the entire system, I'm relieving that nitrogen right here on the suction side of the system. So we're relieving it right here. That way I know it's flowing through the entire system. If potentially there's any frozen water, the nitrogen flowing through it is above zero degrees Celsius. It's gonna flow by it. It's gonna melt it. It's gonna take that vapor, that water vapor away 
and it's going to leave the system right here. Okay, once the pressure is relieved, there's still a little bit in there. We're gonna pull another vacuum and see where we're at at that point. All right, so we're back after 48 hours, a triple sweep and an oil change, and we are down under 500 microns. I moved the micron gauge from the liquid line because I wanted to check it in a different spot as well. So I also put it over here at the compressor and now we're at 335. Sorry, the lighting's bad there. So we're under that 500. We're gonna perform a quick rise test by closing off the ball valves. Make sure we don't rise up and we flatten out. And then we're good to put the gas back in the system. Okay, so we've sort of leveled off here around 480. So our ball valves are closed. So our rise test indicates that we're pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and charge this system up. We wanna add this refrigerant very strategically to get as much in as we can before we start the machine up. There's the receiver over there. We wanna put liquid in, we wanna fill the receiver, we wanna fill the liquid line right here. This line here comes from the condenser, this drop down line from the condenser. That's not actually a liquid line, that's called the condensate line because it's coming from the condenser and it's entering the receiver. This here is the liquid line, the outlet of the receiver. All right, so we wanna, most likely what we're gonna do here is put a hose attached to here, and we're gonna jam liquid in, into this line, which is gonna fill the condenser, it's gonna fill the condensate line, the receiver, and the liquid line. We wanna do that, and then when we start the machine up to get the remainder in, we're gonna charge very slowly and throttle it in so we don't put too much liquid towards these Compressors. That is the way we're going to do it, slowly but surely, and we're going to get this thing charged up properly. The system's at a slight positive. You want to take your micron gauge off so you don't damage it. That's very important. The pump is off. These are valved off. We're going to put the Schrader cores back in, and that's it. We pull the vacuum, and we put our holding charge in before we start to charge the system up properly. Okay, so now we're going to put the core back in. Very simple process, okay? Make sure we don't drop it. We fasten this on. We open up the ball valve to the system. We push the stem down. Tighten the core back in so it's nice and snug. And one thing I do here to just check to make sure it's in, I close the ball valve off. Close the ball valve off. Remove that and slowly open the ball valve back up just to make sure there's no pressure here. Okay, once we do that, we're good to go to take the rest of the contraption off. 